it says a uh, um, it says a changed life, but it says this does not mean we will never make mistakes mm -hmm. and that we might at times not be the conduits of love and grace that we were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I struggle with stuff like this too. And, you know, you beat yourself up and it's like, is that really what Christ wants? I'm beating myself up all day because I didn't show love. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did have a wrathful answer or something. But, and it says, but it does not mean that ideally the love of Christ will flow from our lives and we will be a blessing to those around us. So um, basically... Uh, your fall is not your call to act up, you know, just because you fall one time doesn't mean that you should say, oh, I'm never going to get this down. I'm never going to be perfect. I won't ever get it right. So I'm going to continue mm -hmm. to, I'm just, I'm done with church. I'm done with Christ. I'm yeah. just going to walk right. away from all this. Right. So. Yeah. And that means our, our focus is wrong. You right. Know, uh, yeah. A lot of, we're looking to ourselves and in Isaiah 45 verse 22, I kind of came across this this week in looking at the lesson. It says, uh, 45, Isaiah 45, 22, it says, Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. You mm -hmm. know, and there's another Bible text that Pastor Michael always used to say, Looking unto Jesus, right. who is the author and finisher of our faith. If you're looking at yourself, if you're looking at yourself, even if you've been in the church for years, then you, you're looking in the wrong direction. Right. You're yeah. looking, you should be, we should be looking unto Jesus, who alone is able to keep you from falling and to prevent right. you falling. Well, you know, only Jesus can do that, folks. You cannot right. clean yourself up. And Christians often tend to, oh, I've been in the church, I'm, I'm an elder. You know, I'm an elder. Who do you think you are? And the thing with us, God is saying, listen, you got it wrong. We need to learn to, and the good news about when we read the Bible, when we look at uh, the sons of thunder, get back to them, I know I chased that rabbit. Yes, I did. But anyway, when we look at the sons of thunder, after the death of Christ, they got it right. Right. They began to look to Christ for all of their answers. Right. And, and going back to the, yes. your falls, your act, or, yeah, anyways, you know, I, the, the verse that popped in my head was 1 John 1, 9, which mm -hmm. most people are familiar with. You know, if yes. we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all Amen. unrighteousness. Amen. And so that's, that's, that's the whole reason we're here. Mm -hmm. is we've already been justified as if we've never sinned. Mm -hmm. We've still got a lifetime of sanctification to go through. Yeah, right. And so we can never think that we're never going to be good enough mm -hmm. because in all reality, you never were good enough. You know, that's why Christ had to come to die on the cross is because we were never going to get it right without him. So, um, I would like to read something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. It's from this year's devotional. It says... <clears throat> Our ability to share the grace and mercy of God with others is rooted in the understanding that we ourselves do not deserve anything mm -hmm. and that we have received salvation out of God's graciousness and not by the sweat of our brow. Only when we understand that at the foot of the cross we all stand on even ground, mm -hmm. that none of us is worthier than the other. Mm -hmm. that there is only one who is worthy of our praise and glory, mm -hmm. only then will we be able to joyfully share God's mercy and grace with everyone. Amen. 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 That's good stuff right Amen. there. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise him. Thank you. That's, we all need to be on that playing field. Mm -hmm. We need to see everyone as under that cross. No one is, right. we're not trying to climb up it to get closer to Jesus. We're, we're all still there. I mean, we're trying to climb up it to get closer to Jesus, but, but we're still at that level. We're still under Christ. So. And we're not going to put anybody down to get up. Right. Get we're stepping on their head to push them down further. Yeah. yeah. Um, any other thoughts on that or move forward? To um, we can go move forward. Okay, so moving on to Tuesday's lesson, it says telling the story of Jesus, and that seems like such a simple concept, mm, mm. and if you do it like Paul did it, he just said, you know, I don't preach anything except for Christ and him crucified, mm -hmm. and then obviously resurrected, so it's a very simple story, but like I said, we as humans tend to kind of mess this up. Um, it says Matthew 8, 28 through 34, let's see what we got here, it says Jesus, or Will you go ahead and go back up for me, Dr. Carrico? 20, 34. He's there. Oh, oh. There you go. It said, uh, Jesus' first ordained missionaries were demon-possessed. They were charged 
or changed dramatically after meeting Jesus and restored physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Mm. Then Jesus asked them to share their story with all the people in that region. They had a story to tell because the power of Christ had changed their lives and could share their personal testimony and encourage others to let Jesus transform their lives. Mm. Right. And uh, this is so true. If you read Matthew 8, 28 through 34, um, maybe Sister Jackie, you want to read that for us? <clears throat> when he had come to the other side, to the country of the... Gerardines. Yeah, Gerardines. them. Gerardines. There Gerardines. met him two <laughs> demon-possessed men Gerardines. coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine feeding. Mm -hmm. So the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. Mm -hmm. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled, and they went away into the city and told everything, including what had mm -hmm. happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so the question was, what happened to these men and what did the townspeople find when they came out to see what happened? And obviously we've already read that they were restored. Um, and so we, I mean, you look at that, you see someone like that. If you see someone who was, you know, mentally ill, crazy, you mm -hmm. think, oh, there's no way that they could possibly ever. And, and the truth is, though, without Christ, we were the same way. We Absolutely. were mentally ill. We were crazy. Absolutely. We were demon possessed. Right. And... And so, uh, yeah. and it, in some of this, it kind of confused me because, you know, it talks about how uh, they were sitting at the master's feet. What did they see? And it says they were sitting at the master's feet. And I was reading the verse that was given, so I was, that's not making any sense. So going over to Matthew 18 through 20, mm -hmm. it kind of gives it a little more context and says, uh, well, this isn't the verse, but it says he, they were sitting at Jesus' feet after he had restored them. And so that's the same thing for us is, um, when we feel that salvation, are we doing what we need to do is which sit at the feet of Jesus and to be restored daily? Because uh, like Dr. Miller says, you know, we're a leaky vessel and we have to be filled up uh, daily. I've heard him say that. So um, There's a song that goes, what a wonderful change in my life has been brought since Jesus came into my life. And this, that's what happened to these men. Mm -hmm. However, I am sure there were skeptics, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, right, what yeah. really happened? And we have to recognize as God's people, because we're going to keep it real as Christians, that when God is blessing you or using you, mm -hmm. not everybody's happy. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know? So we have to remember our purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, our goal, what it's all about. It's not about us. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all about God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's that's very true. There will be people even in the church that tend to get jealous, and yeah. that, but we can't let that uh, hinder us as Christians. Right. Or even, um, you know, maybe we should even be praying for those people too. I mean, uh, Matthew eight or Mark, Mark eight five eighteen through twenty it says, when he had gotten into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Mm -hmm. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Mm -hmm. And which is strange because, you know, the, the rich young ruler, you know, he, uh, Jesus told him, you know, get rid of everything and follow me. Mm -hmm. But this guy, he said, I want to follow you. And he said, no, 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 <laughs> you have a different purpose in life. Your purpose is to go and basically pave the way here, um, because I think it says that uh, later on down the yes, you got, right. that you know he basically prepared the way for people to believe mm -hmm. um, when Jesus came to their town. So, um, so you know, we all have purposes 
that are not necessarily, we tend to want to do something, but Christ is the one that gives us the perfect purpose and shows us what we need to be doing. Um, and obviously, his purpose was to share the good news, which is the purpose of every Christian, mm -hmm. right? The, yeah. What has happened in our life, you know? Right. My question is, the lesson topic says telling the story of mm -hmm. Jesus, and I wrote here, do you have a testimony? And the reason why I wrote that, we as God's people need to make ourselves available to, to the Holy Spirit working. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm not knocking anybody mm -hmm. where you tell your testimony from 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But are you letting me know that God hasn't done anything for you other than 30 years ago? Right. Mm -hmm. So we need oh, to fresh. allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Make ourselves available. It's not what we want to do, but what God wants to do. So right. we can have a fresh story to tell. Yeah, right. See, I, I kind of have a little bit of a different take. Whenever I was reading it, I, when I read the whole lesson, I kind of sit there and thought, okay, this is a little different than what I would say if I was telling the story of Jesus. Because oftentimes, I'm the type of person, I'll sit there and go, well, you know, there's prophecy. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that have happened throughout history. There's so many things that, mm -hmm. you know, the prophecy of... Uh, Christ's coming in the first place and then how he actually came and how all those things happened and there's no way that these things could have happened unless God literally had his hand in it mm -hmm. and I usually go to those things whenever I'm talking about Christ and I, I talk about the things that happened in my life but you brought something up just now mm -hmm. you can't go back to 30 years ago this happened and I'm still telling that story right. so and this actually goes right into Wednesday's lesson testifying okay. with assurance mm -hmm. you can literally say every year something has changed that's something right. has happened yes, that's right. and oftentimes you can give one person a testimony about things that happened in your life that was five years ago because it's relevant to them mm -hmm. right but then you can tell somebody a testimony about what's happened in your life about 20 years ago mm -hmm. that's relevant to someone else right Right. Or that happened last year right. that's relevant to this person. Right. So different things happen in your life where you can sit there and say, hey, I remember that when this was going on in my life, these things were happening. And this is what I know that, that God did for me, that Christ was involved in every step that I took. Right. You know, even whenever I struggle, you know, there's things I've overcome because of these things. Right. So there's that, there's that like I said, going right into Wednesday's lesson, there's that assurance and there's that ability both on Tuesday to, to right. tell who Christ is Amen. through Amen. multiple different events over a course of many years. Right. Amen. Before we move on to Wednesday's lesson, I just wanted to read this. It says, this is what everyone can do whose heart has been touched by the grace of God, which is sharing Christ. And it says, their testimonies, and I wrote out, I scribbled out Decapolis and I put Tulsa, or Sepulpa, or wherever you're from, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. it said, uh, I wrote 1 Corinthians 3, 6, which says, you know, uh, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So I have planted, James is watered, and God gives the increase. So we never know, just by telling the story doesn't mean that someone's going to be saved immediately, but that seed can be planted. And I also wrote, um, every day we are all a New Testament um, are, we de are we telling the story of Christ as well as the Bible? Um, because I think every day that we wake up, we should have a New Testament because Amen. we should not only are we breathing, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't, uh, but we should be able to have a New Testimony every day, as Sister Jackie said. Um, and we can move right into Wednesday's lesson. Uh, maybe, who read, James, you want to read that? Okay, so we must have the personal assurance of salvation in Jesus so that it will be possible to share it with someone else. We cannot share what we do not have ourselves. Right. Ooh. There are con conscientious Christians who live in a needless state of perpetual uncertainty, wondering whether they will ever be good enough to be saved. Have mercy. Mm. If by faith we have accepted Jesus and he lives in our hearts through his Holy Spirit, the gift of eternal life is ours today and for eternity, unless we choose to reject it uh, at some future time. So uh, that that's, yeah, that's, that states it. Well, I tell you. Yeah. And I, we, I think you mentioned earlier about having that blessed assurance. Christians should have that blessed assurance. Mm -hmm. and I also wanted to say, too, that as we think about daily testimonies, you think that your alarm clock woke you up. Mm -hmm. No. You are wrong. 
It's God who gives breath every day. So Amen. That, that, that is a testimony when you think about God giving you life and sustaining you every day. We need to learn how to count uh, the, the blessings, name them one by mm -hmm. one. You remember that? Little count your many blessings, name them one by one. One, yep. one, by one. Uh, we need to be mindful of that. Amen. And also, too, and I'll be quiet, the, in Revelation it says, they overcame by the blood by, of the Lamb and what? The, testimony. the word of their testimony. So, folk, take note and see what God is doing in your life and tell somebody, oh, did you see what God did right. for me there? Or do you see what God did for you there? Right. Yeah. And that's where I think um, maybe Adventists get kind of hung up is yes. they want to say we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and keeping the law. You know, they don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want yeah, uh, to... <laughs> some do, yeah, some do. So, um, but uh, I think well, we one other thing too to cut you off too before you go. On. You notice one thing too that you remember that demoniac Jesus told him to go back to his town. Mm -hmm. right. He didn't send him with a Bible, did he? No, no. no. He said, "Tell them what has happened. What has happened mm -hmm. tell them in your own life, huh? In in, in his own life, in, right. in his own life." And so the thing of it is, is that uh, well, I believe we need the Bible, but I'm just saying the folk. He did not have a Bible. I don't read where he had a Bible. Right. He went and told about his encounter with Jesus. Right. Pray about it. Seek God's face. Seek, you know, and talk to God as our new pastor mentions. When you wake up in the middle of the night, man, talk to God. Right. Say, God, mm -hmm. I, need a, I need a richer walk with you today. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see you. You know, get real with God as you always say. You get real with God because it is, it is a desperate time we're living in. Right. You know. Um. You know I kind of like that, well, like, but I kind of need to reference the second part of that where it says, you know, the Christians who have that mm. uncertainty, you yeah. know, about assurance and everything. I remember whenever I first became a Christian, there was a few years actually, mm -hmm. you know, because I was a teenager and I, I was going to church by myself. I mean, I literally rode my bike to and from church. Um, mm -hmm. Long story on that. But the thing is, is I, I always had that that atmosphere around me to where I felt like I was constantly failing and like I couldn't get anywhere. And unfortunately, the church that I was going to, although it brought me to Christ, although I was learning, they had this mentality that if you were not doing things right, mm -hmm. then you were flat out wrong. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, it was, it was a hard line. Yeah. And there was a sense of assurance when somebody sat there and said, no, it's a growth. Right. You know, you're not going to become a Christian today and tomorrow your entire life be perfect. There are things that you're going to have to overcome right. throughout time. You're, you're going to have to basically, you're going to have to slowly clean out the refrigerator. You have to slowly clean up the living room. You have to mm -hmm. slowly sort all the laundry. You're going to have to slowly clean the inside of the house and start mowing the yard and start taking. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be tomorrow everything's perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the house has to be over time, it's it's a work, it's an right. effort that you put forward, and you learn over time. And when I when I got that, I got that assurance. Right. So like I can now turn to somebody and give that testimony. And that was I kind of hate saying this, but that was like 22 years ago. Right. Well, it just fits into <laughs> weathering. You know, it says uh, there are conscien conscientious Christians who live in a state of perpetual uncertainty. Wondering whether they will ever be good enough to be saved. I know plenty of Christians like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, you will never be good enough to be saved. Like you're saying, you know, you're in the church 30 years. Right. You're still not good enough. You're only as good as Christ is in you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so. It's still that continual yeah. growth, that continual right. cleaning. And I don't, I don't know if we can pull up Hebrews 9 or 10 on the screen here. Yeah. Um, but one thing that really came into my mind is, uh, I can just read it here. It says... Uh, Hebrews 10, 19, 19 through 22, there and it is. says, uh, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with Perfect. a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water and what really stuck out to me is right there it says having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us mm -hmm. and I was thinking you know I don't know if there's any artists out there but there's like artists that they sprinkle yeah. like a, a, um, a canvas, the canvas yeah. and you can sprinkle forever but there's always going to be part of that canvas still showing see. yeah and so that's what I was thinking is, is every day as we sprinkle, just a little bit more of us gets covered in Christ. So we can still have 
you know, uh, faults and things like that. But the more we get sprinkled, the more we can be transformed. So, um, I would like to re direct our thought a little bit. When we go back and think about this, I know we're running out of time. It says, it says about um, about the the, uh, the demoniac. It says, but the point is, Jesus restored them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. When that happens, you are clean every way. Now, right. what happens is, uh, it, life doesn't stop there. Uh, right. You continually, you know, uh, we have to be careful. There is a, a, a line there. Right. But we don't look at the line. What do we look at? Jesus. You look at Jesus. Right. The problem is, we start looking at ourselves and what I have enough. Mm -hmm. We have to learn. Uh, we have this issue of looking at ourselves in the mirror. We need to learn how to look to Christ. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. I can be an overcomer through, only through Christ. Right. Don't look at yourself. And, and, and that is where we gain the victory, in the prayer room with Christ. You know, oh, you slipped and fell. Well, don't focus on you slipping and falling. Look to Jesus who's the other right. I can't stress this enough. When the demonic was healed, he was healed completely perfect. Right. Perfect. Right. That's what God wants to give us. Mm -hmm. now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. But I'm saying Christ has that power. Right. And the reason I'm agitated about it is because if I say Christ can't make me perfect, then I deny Him. Right. All I got is Him. Right. So that's the point. And so uh, the issue is that stop looking at what other people are saying. Stop looking at yourself, but look to Jesus. Right. And that that can that can go right into Thursday. Is yeah. you know Galatians two twenty. I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. And so, Hallelujah, brother. Right. And so, and you can say uh, those times where we fall short, we're just killing ourselves. We're going back to our dead state. And until we live by the Christ living in us, we're dead. So, we together? Yep. Okay, good. Oh, we're good. Um, I th I don't know exactly the time. Oh, we got a little more time. We got we, we got, got a few talking. minutes. Okay, okay. A few minutes. so we're still good. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it says here it is um, in Thursday's lesson, or maybe let's see what we got. It says powerful testimonies that have a life changing impact on others. Focus on what Christ has done for us, not on what we have given up for Him. Mm -hmm. Our testimony should center on his sacrifice, not on our so-called sacrifice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Christ never asks us to give up anything that is not, that it is in our best interest to retain. Amen. We should meditate on how good Jesus has been to us mm -hmm. and the purpose, peace, and happiness he has given us. Mm -hmm. Which is so true. Because, I mean, you can sit here and say, well, I gave up smoking, I gave up alcohol, mm -hmm. I gave up... And what does that have to do with Jesus dying on the cross? I mean, that's that, it's good. I'm not yeah, saying it's, it's not, it's not it, but it's yeah, right. I, you know, when I read, when I read the very first part of it, there are certain sacrifices when we accept Christ. Mm -hmm. There are things He can ask us to surrender. And sometimes, when you mm -hmm. think about it, and you brought it up, you know, smoking, alcohol, things mm -hmm. like that. You know, there are certain things that when you accept Christ. And when you give up those things, you make those sacrifices, usually they are not things that are, you know, good things. They're usually the bad things that it's like, okay, I have to give up that selfish thing. Right. And it's because of Christ. It's because mm -hmm. of what Christ is doing in your life. So right. it's kind of interesting to think that, that you're mm -hmm. not sacrificing something good. Most times you're sacrificing the things that were more selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I just wanted to point out that... Um, we are a part of, it talks about in here, it says, yet the history of Christianity is filled with stories of those who had to make tremendous sacrifices for Christ's sakes. Mm -hmm. And I just want to um, say that we're part of that history. Final word to James. Hey, Amen. Uh, there was a statement on Friday's lesson. It says, the faith that is unto salvation is not a mere intellectual ascent to truth. It is not enough to believe about Christ. We must believe in him. The only faith that will, will benefit us is that which embraces him as a personal savior, which appropriates his merits to ourselves. Amen. Sister Jackie, why don't you have closing prayer for us? Sure. Loving Father, we come in your presence just to say thank you for this, your holy Sabbath day, and thank you for the freedom of worship. We mm. pray for your anointing upon us, Lord. We pray that you use this today, that somebody's life will be changed. 
Lead us and guide us into the next phase of worship, Lord. Let your will be fulfilled and not ours. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not here. She's going to deal with you. <laughs>